Hi guys, welcome back to the Rig Rundown series brought to you by Bendix. Now stick around to the end of the episode to find out how to win your very own brake kit. Now behind me is Maddie's Flexi 79. Now I was actually meant to film this car a long time ago. I think he was in the best of the best I was going to do. Couldn't get around to it because we live far from each other and I'm kind of glad I didn't back then because between then and now a lot has actually changed on this. So let's get straight into it because this is probably one of the most modified cruisers that I've seen in a long time. Oh, look at that intro. You just come down from the sun, amazing. All right, we're here with Matt. Um, this is his 2019, 18, 2010. 17, 2010. 2010. I'm getting blown away because this bonnet's a new bonnet. Are they just interchangeable straight up? Yep. There you go. All right, so 2010 Cruiser. Um, you've had this thing for a while then. When did you get it? Yeah, about four years ago. Yep. Yeah, right. So if you want to find out the whole story behind this build and how it came about and a bit more about Matt, I'll drop down below the link to part one, which will have all the kind of backstory of this. But today, we're just going to go straight through, I guess, all the features and that. There's a lot on this thing, so let's get straight into it. We'll start with bull bar and lights and bits and pieces and um, go from there. So just fully handmade this thing? Or? Yep, fully custom built. I started with the winch cradle and then built the wings out. So I've got a Smitty built winch in there. It's 12,000 pound yep. with the rope and it's got a pretty fancy handle on it too. Yeah, sweet. All right, steady light bar. You can tell by the cover, they got pretty flash covers on there, yeah. man. They look sweet. Um, big change on this, you haven't run hoops. What's the reason for that? I just like the look, like the pre-runner look with no bars and nothing in the way. Yep, this grill looks very different as well and I can see an intercooler behind there. So is this something you made yourself or? Yeah, yeah, custom made the grill there myself and yep. same with the intercooler. Yep, so you made, oh, you actually made your own intercooler. Yeah, yeah, the whole kit. Pretty good on the TIG then, a bit of alley work. Yeah, a bit of practice there, a few hours in the shed. So you've pretty much done like everything yourself in this, hey? Yeah, the whole thing. Yeah, sweet. All right, we'll keep going. Around the sides, got some more steady lights in there. Um, people always ask about headlights. Are these from somewhere or what you No, think? I built them myself. Yep. Um, pulled them all apart and retrofitted them. And So it's got different colors going on, halo ring and all that. Yeah, yeah, interchanging and yeah, painted in black. Yeah. So chrome for a while, but. Are the actual globes LED or HID? Um, HIDs. Yep, yep, cool. All right, which way do you want to head around this way? We've got a snorkel over here. Yep. Did you make this one or? Nah, that's an Axis Fabrication snorkel. Oh, from WA? Yeah, yeah, I saw it on your rig. Yeah, my old ones are from <laughs> Axis. Um, so four inch, obviously, we'll get into airbox and that under underneath there, so that's all probably been done. Um, these look new. They're a bit smaller than the standard clear views. Yeah, they're the new upgraded compact ones. Yeah, okay, so they still pull out and everything. And, oh yeah. Pull all the way on up them. Yeah, mint. You ever towed a trailer? Yes, towed yep. a few boats. Yep. And um, in about two weeks, I'll be towing a tow hauler halfway through Australia. Yeah, right. So you made your own one. Yep. Yeah, sweet. All right, keep going down the back. <laughs> um, tray as well. Looks custom made. Yeah, that's all custom built. It's my second tray I built for it. It's all aluminium. Made some flares for it and all the toolboxes. Yep. So you, these are pretty sweet looking. Oh, is it locked? No, oh. we're in. It's just full of gear. <laughs> so it's all just storage and that, because obviously you don't have a canopy on there at the moment, so I guess you've got to try and get all your recovery gear into these little toolboxes and stuff. That one's got the fuel filler in it. Oh yeah, so that's all hidden in there. For the sub tank, yep. so two, two tanks. Yeah, how many litres all up? Um, 180 all up, so twin 90s. Yeah, sweet. So heaps of range. Hey, see the old exhaust punching out the side there? <laughs> the old soot machine. So did you make your own exhaust as yep. well? Yeah, old all... exhaust, all four inch, five inch dump, yep. all stainless. It's nice. got a hot dog in it too, so yeah, right. no drains or anything. No, it's mint. Um, around the back, obviously got tie downs. I've liked the way he's actually done this tray because the sides kind of kick in. It's not just a full square, it's kind of chamfered on the side. So you can still have all those tie down points, but then it kind of locks things in as well, which is pretty sweet. No rear draw on this one? No, nah, no rear draw. I like it clear underneath for the suspension. Yeah, yeah. There's a bit going on there. We'll try and show you in a sec about what's going on underneath, but that's really the sort of the showpiece of this whole build. There's a lot of suspension work, so we'll get into that. Obviously, the number plate say Flexi 79. Yep. <laughs> so I'm real keen to see what this thing does in the Flex Challenge, because it's going to be up there for sure. We might be setting some records today, so stick around for that. I've got the raised tow bar, so I've actually chopped the chassis there. Yep. Lifted it up and welded it on. And so this bait. whole bar's moved up or yep, just that? The whole bar. Yeah, right. So it's normally that's about 120 mil lower. 
Because this is all part of the chassis, because what, are they normally a bolt-on thing? Huh? Yeah, and that's a bolt-on normally. Now it's become so I've chopped off of the it. edges here. Yep. And then just chopped out the back cross member and welded Sink that in. in. Yeah, right. Um, all right, pretty much same down the other side. So we'll go inside the car and then under the bonnet and then we'll um, get into this crazy suspension. All righty, inside the cruiser, I've just uh, gone on my back lawn here. It's got some grass floor mats, which is sweet. I used to have grass thongs back in the day. <laughs> Feels good on your feet. All right, so standard cruiser interior, but we've got a few other things going on. First thing I noticed is some humming going on. Is there a fridge in here? Yep, the center console fridge here. 15 yep. liter Bush men's fridge. Super handy. I see some cup holders back there too. Yep. Never have enough cup holders in the car? Nah. So that's that's always keeping your beers cold, eh? Because you run a fridge on the back, or is it just this one? Or? No, I run two, so one on the back, but yep. this one is good for when I don't have the canopy. Yeah, just having a drink when you're on the road, you don't have to jump out and grab it. Center console, more cup holders, obviously. Um, is this one you made or you got from somewhere? Or? Um, this one is from Mackay Auto Trim, but yep. I've actually trimmed it because no one does a center console for the fridge. Yep. So I've had to custom build all of this yeah, right. to get it to suit. Oh, it looks mint. I know this is a big old gap here for a handbrake, but there isn't one. Where's the handbrake? So this is actually the handbrake here. So it's electronic. Okay. So you engage and disengage. Yeah, right. So it's, yeah, everyone says cruiser handbrakes are crap. There's a whole lot of things on the market to fix them, but is that basically work like a proper brake, isn't it? It's like a full disc under there? Yeah, it's a full disc, proper brake on the transfer. She ain't going nowhere. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> That's mint. Um, head unit's just been upgraded a bit there. So with that stereo, what, that head unit's just, it's obviously aftermarket. Yeah, just the on, I used to have one of them. <laughs> So it's got all your Bluetooth in that? Yeah, yeah, all of that there, GPS, Bluetooth. And you've changed speakers? Yep, so I've got running all Rockford Fosgate gear. Yep. So I've got a sub in the back, 12 inch sub behind your seat and a five channel lamp behind mine. Yep, you made your own box and everything? Yeah, made all the own box, made all the door pockets. So they're all aluminium, they've just vinyl wrapped. And Cause they're normally just in these holes, eh? The crappy yeah. little speakers. <laughs> Shitty four inch yep. speakers. Yep. Got another cup holder here. Yep, <laughs> there you go. That's uh, light for the water sensor on the secondary filter. Oh, okay. So that's like a uh, fuel water yeah, separator, yeah, yeah. 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 What other stuff's happening on the fuel system there? You got, is there priming pump and everything? Yeah, or? yeah, I've got a lift pump on it. Yep. We'll, we'll get into that on the engine bay. There's a few bits and pieces going under there, but I see heaps of gauges. So obviously water temps, boost, yeah. um, EGT. How are the EGTs going this? Doesn't get too hot? Nah, nah, it loves it, eh? It probably sits around 300 most of the time. Yep. Because you've done, you, you've saying before, you've done a few intercoolers. What was it? Why, why did you change them so many times? Oh, well, I've changed it to get rid of all your silicon bends and everything. So oh, okay. it's more solid the whole way now. Yep, yep. And then obviously I've had to change it when I've done the suspension yeah, now. Yeah, that's just to hold more boost and stuff. And yeah, yeah. Because hoses blow off and shit, you never want that. Yeah, more reliable. There's no UHF radio in here. <laughs> nah, not yet. I'm waiting for a new one to come. Yeah, right. He's so got the, the whole there. cape with a handheld. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Ooh, a hat holder there. Um, what else in our missile? We've got a tow pro, obviously that's for towing your trailers and stuff. Yep, tow pro, uh, cruise control. Oh, mint. Oh, there's Five another little select. switch here, seen that. So what's the idea behind that? There's a few numbers going on, is that selectable tunes? Yeah, yeah, so I've got six different tunes in it. Yep. Yeah, Depends right. what I'm doing. Just sort of standard, power, um, yep, tow mode, yep. All sorts of stuff, oh, that's handy. Um, locker buttons, so you're saying the rear is? A Detroit locker. So it's like LSD. Yeah, yeah, automatic yep. manual. So it's got worm gears and that. I think that's what um, it's No, 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 it's, it's got the teeth still, okay. but it's got springs and everything. So it's a lot more complex than your simple. It's not just a clutch. Yeah, nah, nah. It. It's like teeth. Yeah, sweet. And front's a uh, air locker or? Yeah? Um, e locker, Harapi locker. Yep, cool. Seats are different or are they? Um, yeah, yeah. So they're XR6 seats. I oh, know. So a bit more like kind of side support. Oh, it definitely makes a difference for driving. Yeah, I've got XR6 ones in my patrol actually, and it definitely makes a difference. So. Hold you in when you're yeah. moving side to yeah, side. Yeah, for sure. And um, did you make mounts or you just got those adapters? Um, no, no, I made my own mounts and everything and yep. got it all signed off. Yep. Yeah, mint. So I've got like 10 mod codes, 10 yeah. mod plates on the ute. <laughs> bit going on. That's Queensland life, eh? All yep. right. Let's go under the bonnet. Oh, I don't know if you mentioned this at the start. Oh, I think we did actually, but this bonnet is off the new 2020, well, post DPF ones. That was just a straight bolt on, was it? Yeah, yeah, bonnet? straight bolt on. Yeah, straight on there. All right, there's definitely a bit going on under here. Put that that right on. Um, I can see some suspension stuff. We'll, we'll get onto that in a sec, but motor-wise, is it unopened? It's still stock? Like, yeah, it's still internals. stock, internals. Turbo stock or? Ah, uh, no, I've got an upgraded G Turbo, yep. G350, the next gen. Okay, and how much boost is in that? I'm um, running about 34 pound of boost. Yep. And then I've got plus 30 injectors, 
I've got a solid intake, which I've built all the way down to the turbo. Yep. So it gets rid of the shitty plastic thing that sucks in. Yeah, yep. When you're running that high boost. So when was the last tune you had? Um, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, what did that do on the dyno? Um, so I've got a few different maps. My biggest map I've made was 307 and yep. 950 Newton meters. Yep. But um, yeah, things have changed a little bit. Yeah. I can just change set that it tune. how I want it. And um, that's still obviously manual. Is there a clutch upgrade as well? Yeah, yeah. So I've got an upgraded MPC clutch, 3900 Newton meter. Yep. Loving it. There's no two batteries in here. Which is interesting. Yeah, so this is equivalent to a dual battery. This is a Megalife battery and it's a lithium battery. Okay. It's actually got a little button here. When you press it, it opens up a reserve. So if you flatten your battery, yep. you just hit that and you're good to go. Yeah, right. So this is essentially your second battery with all your accessories and then in that, it's like its own little jump starter. Yeah, yeah, it's unreal. That saves so much weight and space, eh? It's yeah, only like 10 kilos for it. Yeah. Opposed yep. to two batteries and extra weight. Obviously, Every you can see that. Can't <laughs> yeah. Can't fit a second battery nah, in. That's it. <laughs> Every time I film different cars, there's always just new tech and tech coming out. It's crazy the way things are going. So that's sweet. All right, what else has been done? Have you got catch cans and stuff in here? And oh, no, no fuel? catch can. It's yep. just run straight back to the airbox. Yep. Any more plans changing motor stuff or? Not at the moment. I'm pretty happy where it is. Yeah. That second tune's really made things awesome. Yeah, for sure. All right, itching to get into the suspension stuff. So let's have a look at what's going on in this thing. We'll start with the front and then head to the back. Well, while we're in here actually, this is part of suspension, a bit of a cross brace, is it? Yeah, yeah, this is a crossover. This is for the callovers, so it's just to add some extra support for it. Yep. Yeah, they're sitting so much higher than standard. Your standard kind of, I guess, where your coil would sit would be like another bloody foot down, but that's all the way up here, so you can get heaps more travel. Yeah, I had to chop all the guards to yep. make room for it to come and basically put the bonnet down and was like, that's as high as I can go, <laughs> so I'm making it all the way. <laughs> Yeah, there are resis up here and everything, so. Yeah, all the adjusters. Yep, no, it looks nice sitting there. Cool, all right, let's get in and have a look. All right, underneath suspension, this is what caught my eye with this car when I first saw it. So, um, tell us what's going on in the front. There's a bit under there. So I've got 14 inch, 2.5 inch bore coilovers in the front. And then I've also got two and a half inch hydro bump stops in it. Yep. I've got flipped radius arms. Um, I've braced all the diffs. So I've got the bash plate on the front and side bracing on it, so yep. nice and strong. Oh, it's all very well built. I mean, you probably can't see it on camera, but up close, like all the details have been done, even all those lines and breathers and that, it's all tied back. It's all been kind of finished off properly. A lot of guys build these things and slap them together, i.e. me, not finishing things properly, but this thing's been done right. Um, you've had to make your own hoop and everything cut in there. Yeah, made all my own hoop. It's got a heap of chassis bracing yeah, going on there. That, yeah. So she's strong and she's gonna flex like a beast. I can't wait to try it on the flex ramp. Um, so yeah, diff, you got front air locker. Um, are your diff gears same standard? Um, no, I've upgraded the diff gears. Yep. So I'm running four ones instead of three nines. Yep. And I've also run in the cr solid spacer instead of the oh, factory okay. crust tube. The, the pinion, yeah, okay. Um, axles still standard, are they chromoly or anything? Um, no, standard axles. Yep. Um, the diffs are from 105 series. Yep. So it's a bit wider than standard. Yep. All right, let's go to the back and have a look down there. All right, looking at the rear, before we get onto the suspension, we didn't mention tyres and rims. So what tyres and wheels have you got? So I've got Yokohama tyres on it. Yep. Um, and they're in a 35 by 12 and a half, 17. Yep. And they're on some Dirty Life DT1 bead locks. All right, rear, same sort of deal. I see a whole lot of chassis bracing, a whole lot of tubing. So yeah, run us through that. So in the rear, I've got uh, 12 inch travel, 2.5 inch ball coilovers. And then I've got the same hydros in the rear, so 2.5 inch. Yep. And those coilovers are all adjustable. I see they're so, on an angle there. What's the idea behind that? So they're on an angle just because of the clearance on everything. Yep. As in, you always try to get them as vertical as you can, but with my flex, even with if I had less flex, just when the wheel goes down, because they're 2.5 yeah. inch instead of 2 inch, yep. with the cruiser chassis being so narrow, yeah. you'll actually want to even hit on the chassis and then on one side, while the other side's trying to hit on the upper arm. Yeah, right. So it's sort of, that's the only way it can be. So how many goes did you have trying to get all that geometry right? You would have to just up and down, up and down in the shed trying to get it to, to work. Yeah, it was probably about four weeks straight where I was just mucking around, moving the mm. mounts, trying to get them right. Yep. You sort of put one thing here and then another thing there and then yep. it doesn't work. So it's all been braced. So all the mounts I've done myself, my yep. own design. What about arms? Did you make all these these tubes and stuff? And yeah, yeah, I've made all the arms. So I've got 1.25 inch rod ends on everything. Yep. So at the back, I've got your rose joints, which are greasable. Yep. And up the front, I've got a special um, 
Bosch, that doesn't bind up like your normal ones. Yep. They've got Teflon liners in it. Yep. So now nice. triangulated forelink as well, I've noticed, and you've actually moved your lower control arm like a lot more forward, eh? Like yeah, they're about here. They're about 1,200 long. Yep. Um, most of your other kits sit around here, your leaf hangers. Yep. So I've got another 300 mil, so I've got a design fab torsion sway bar in there. Yep. So that's everything like else, roll. it works really well. So that's like a spline shaft, eh, rather yeah, than it, just your normal rod. Yeah. And it's way up, up near the fuel tank there, so it's yep. not going to hit on anything. Yep. Um, the diff's been braced on the top. Yep. So it's strong, and even my uppers, they're longer and they've got adjustment in it, so I've got a few different bolt holes. Yep. Yep. Um, Notice the brakes, you were saying you had a booster, but on the front as well, I noticed the rotors and that are different. Yeah, yeah, I've got slotted rotors yep. and the Bendix brake upgrade. Oh, so the special full upgrade kit. and everything, braided lines. Yep. Oh, you can actually win that in this episode. <laughs> Speaking of the devil, yeah, later on you can win that complete brake upgrade. I recommend it. We use it on all our cars as well. So, yeah. And I did notice it. We'll take this thing for a drive in a second, and he was saying you can lock up these 35, so that's real mint. Cool. Anything else you missed on the back there? That's so. With my fuel tank, I've actually raised that too. So that's yep. setting up about 150 mil higher than standard. Even all that, got looks like it's got custom mounts and everything. So every cross member from the cab back, I've custom made tubes yep. and everything for it all. Yep. So just maximum approach angle, yeah, yeah. departure angle, so nothing wants to hit. Yep. And this chassis bracing, it's not only on the outside, it's on the inside yep. and on the top side. So it's... No, you've done well, eh? Like, just thought of everything, made sure it's strong and reliable. Try to stop that chassis from flexing and making <laughs> yeah. the weight go out evenly. Yeah, sure. Cool. All right, let's jump in this thing and take it for a drive. All righty. Try the old big cruiser. I've done a few of these now. Oh, we've got to be. See you, mate. All righty. I think this is one of the first single cab cruisers I've driven. Um, apart from pulleys a couple of weeks ago that we tried, so. It's got a handbrake. Oh, the electronic handbrake. There we go. That easy. All right. Interesting to see how this thing goes with like so much different suspension set up, having all those coilovers and that. I mean, designed for flex, a lot of comp trucks and stuff run them, but for a street car and doing long touring trips, um, yeah, I guess they're not really designed for that kind of comfort in mind. They're sort of more for that flex, hey? So, yeah. Interesting to see how it goes, but it feels good already. Oh, how good's the air con? The amount of cars that I film that don't have air con, <laughs> it's so good. So it's got that Detroit Auto rear locker, so. Yep. So it kind of acts like an LSD. Yeah, so it's always. You yeah. put your foot down, you just double peg it. Skating around in the back a bit, coming down the hill, so it is light in the rear. I felt it then, I was coming down, it was very corrugated road, this one. Come on the brake a bit and it kind of hopped a bit, I felt that, which means the rear brakes are working at least. <laughs> Can't really put my foot down, it just spins the wheels. Throwing, throwing stones out. <laughs> Should definitely pull it, eh? Oh, so we're out in the bush here, so on a dirt road, but on an actual tarmac road, it'll probably have a ton of torque, but it just, you can tell that it's got the power there because it just spins the wheels on the gravel. Where does it sit at about 110? What kind of RPM? Um, about two and a half. Yeah. Because I've got the reduction gears in it. Yeah, so for sure. Four ones instead of three nines, so yep. little reduction, but. Well, for a farm truck that I guess Toyota brought out as a bit of an old design and they kind of brought them out as a new car, you wouldn't expect it to be a real long drive sort of comfortable car, but I mean, I can see you could take this thing up to the Cape, no worries, and it's very comfortable, especially with the aircon and that, and having its armrests and stuff. The suspension's, I guess, you know, it's behaving pretty good, you know, since it's been such a flexy sort of thing and it's, it's been built to have all of that articulation. Um, I reckon, especially with how light it is, it handles the bumps really well. It doesn't bounce around too much. And um, yeah, I would own it. I drive it every day. I think it's time for Matt to jump in and do his four challenges. I'm gonna see this thing stacks up. That GoPro's gone ham. Alrighty. Rightio, challenge time, we've got our four challenges. So this is the best part of the episode where we start doing a bit of non-scientific stuff. I mean, I'm just on a stopwatch. It's not perfect. Actually, I was thinking of maybe doing like the time thing, I think in one of my episodes, I use the camera to record. It makes it a bit more accurate. But anyway, we're gonna throw the stopwatch on for now so we get a rough idea. Um, so this is the sprint, flat, straight. It's still gravel, so you need a bit of traction. Yeah, a bit of four -wheel drive I it's gonna slip a bit, yeah. four-wheel drive. And you don't have to wait there to hold it down, so. We'll see how it goes. I mean, foot, foot to the floor, you got those different tunes on there. Yeah, so yeah, put on race mode. Power it up, yep. see how we go. 
All right, let's get into it. <laughs> Alrighty, 100 Sam steps, here we go. We got Matt's Flexi 79 now. A couple, well, the last rig rundown was Pulley's. Very similar truck, so we'll see how we go, but I know Matt's has got more power for a fact. Let's see if he can get that power to the ground. Alrighty, in three, two, one, go. That was quicker. Definitely. Oh, shit. Is that soot or dust? That was definitely quicker. We're in the sixes. That was quicker. That was, that was, six, that was 693. You're in the sixes. Beautiful. Pretty damn good. Um, that was like, I could see it was in four drive. The front wheels are doing this. You're getting torque steer and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's going everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's metal. All right, there you go. Did you have like, I saw you weren't on the limiter. You actually took off nicely. Like, yeah, you know, I was crack. worried about the wheel spin. So yeah. I just wanted to take a bit easier. Yeah. And, I'll be up there with one of the quickest crews, I think. 693. All right, time for the comfort challenge. See how we go. I mean, this thing's set up for flex, but comfort is more of that road kind of thing. So we'll find a little uh, flexy track. Maybe we'll just send it up Big Red or something. Who knows? <laughs> Alrighty, time for the comfort challenge. Now we're going to do something a little bit different again in this one um, because these things are set up for a lot more of that slow, flexy stuff. Change up the video a bit instead of doing the 50Ks an hour and see how much water comes out. We've got pretty hectic, flexy little track here. Speed's not a thing in this, it's really just getting from bottom to the top. I'm gonna to see how much water comes out and um, just wash the articulation of these things. So, a couple of water on the bonnet and um, we'll see what's left when you get to the top. Righty, this is the notorious section. We'll see how it goes. For a 79, it's gonna be pretty amazing. What, already? Oh! Guys, dropping in. He hasn't missed a drop yet. Oh, we're out. Don't hit my $800 GoPro. Bloody put me GoPro in the middle. Yep, you're good. Now go in. Yeah, boy! Look at that thing. Tires are still at like 40 PSI, that's all right. That was an interesting experiment, that one. We've ended up with about 80%. We'll let it settle. 80%, bang on. So that's interesting, 80%, I'm going to have to put a little thing in the, in the uh, leaderboard there saying it was like the slow flex challenge because it's a lot different to doing the high speed stuff where it just flies out. But I've got no benchmark for that, so we'll see um, how it goes on the leaderboard. Pulley's obviously last week we did his, so we'll see where it goes compared to that. Alrighty, flex challenge time. Um, we're down thanks to Just Autos letting us use their forklift and we're going to see what this thing can do. High hopes. I think last week you seen Paulie's did over a metre. We'll see if we break the record that just got broken. Alrighty. Looks pretty high, hey? That's, let's smashed it. Alright, that's, what's that? 1,150 mil. No one's ever going to beat that, unless it's a comp truck, I reckon. There we go, the record has been broken. So Pooley had it for like a couple of weeks. He held the trophy, but now it's been broken. Look at that, amazing. And it's a 79, of all things. I thought it might have been a patrol or something, but the way this suspension's set up, I'm not surprised. It's done well. Get the wheelie bin under it. I'm gonna run from love. All right, well, Matty just does a few bit, bit of maintenance under there. Time for the economy chest. test, economy test. So what we did is filled up a start of the day. Now we'll go to the survey and see what she used. Obviously, we've done a whole lot today, a bit of off-roading, a bit of the challenge stuff, a bit of normal driving, so it should be good average. Um, we'll see what she uses. All right, so economy was just filled up. How many k's on the auto? 42.4. 
Uh, 5.81 5.81 litres, 42.4 13.7 litres per 100 Not so bad, did you know what it roughly did before? Or yeah, did you yeah have it's about that, about that yeah. Well it's taking it a bit easy though, I wasn't feeding it Well you got that new tune too, so we'll see 13.7 I think it was, whatever We'll see how it stacks up, let's get onto the uh, leaderboard and see how all these go against all the other cars I'm an island boy I'm an island boy I'm a Man, I seriously gotta stop watching TikTok, hey, it's getting to me Anyway guys, hello and welcome back to the Bendix leaderboard. Now Bendix have been absolute legends. Being part of this Red Rundown series, I want to do a big shout out to them because they give me another kit to give away. You guys know the drills by now. Jump over to the Instagram page, type in Bendix, find their Instagram page and find the photo of Matt's cruiser on there. You just gotta type a comment down below in the photo and let the guys know what car you drive. And then from the comments, they're gonna pick a random winner to win a complete ultimate brake upgrade kit worth over $1,200. So. Make sure you go and do that. We're gonna move on to the rig rundown leaderboard. I, I gotta have more fun with this green screen. Ready, I'll chop my arm off, ready? Chop, ah, yeah, yeah. chop, ah. We started with the sprint challenge. Now the sprint challenge, you did pretty good actually. I'm, I'm gonna say it did pretty good because it was the fastest 79 series we've ever had with a 693. Put him in fifth position, which is kind of midfield, but for a cruiser, took the top spot. So that's pretty pretty damn awesome. Real impressive for that car. Moving on to the Comfort Challenge now. Obviously we changed this up. Uh, we did pull these last week, which was a similar setup. So we did the flexi thing, rather than doing the speed challenge. It came out with 80%. So now I've got something to compare it to. It put them in uh, fifth position again, so midfield. But if we do more of these challenges where it's slow and crawly, we might be able to see where they end up compared to that. So. Next challenge, this is the one he was super, super excited about, and that was the Flex Challenge. He absolutely smashed it. We set a brand new record. Sorry, Paul, you had it for two weeks because we did an 11.55. That was absolutely crazy. It's gonna be long-standing record to flex on that thing. Um, now, while the cameras are off, he actually did a step further. I'm doing the sway bar. He was able to get another, probably 100 mil or so. I think it was like 12.45. So the photo there with the with the bloody wheelie bit under it, he, he ended up putting a can on there as well. So that's pretty damn impressive for you flex enthusiasts. It does have a lot more in it. But when you gotta get the tools out to make that happen, it doesn't really count for this rig right now leaderboard, but nevertheless, it did that uh, result in the end. Now moving on to the economy challenge, we had the same result as Paulie's. This is pretty interesting with a 13.7. May say something about the tunes at Just Autos there because they were absolutely identical. They did the same driving both days because we filmed it on the same day and they came out with the exact same economy. So there you go. But that's it. That's the total results for the rig rundown of Matt's Cruiser. The thing's absolutely off its head. Crazy flex machine, winning that top spot, setting records, um, and, and not bad power either, I'm not gonna lie. So anyway, that's enough talking from me. We'll see you guys in the next rig rundown episode or the next Build Not Board episode uh, every Tuesday on this channel. See you guys. Please click the button to your left if you want to go and check out the latest merchandise we have on our website. If you missed last week's episode, click down below to see it. And most importantly, on the far left, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.